in which you are going to show you a case of uh, post-operative excessive uveitis and uh, the findings which you are going to see are highlighted here. I'm just let you see for a second for yourself and then memorize what you see over here and then I'll go through on what we are seeing in this patient. So this is a slit lamp examination, oblique view and you can see the slit on the cornea and if I start drawing over here, this is, this is the anterior slit going on the epithelium, this is the posterior slit going on the endothelium. Then you've got the posterior slit showing you the depth of the anterior chamber over here. You've got this area of white material in the base, which is called the hypopion. And you, then you measure the height of the hypopion, it's about 3 millimeters. You use the beam, make it vertically shorter and align with this whitish uh, level inferiorly. And then you can measure the height of this. On the surrounding area, you'll see seal congestion. there's late edema. The cornea seems to be hazy and the anterior chamber view seems to be hazy. You will also look for any cells in this area. Here you can see there's opening in the anterior capsule and this is the IOL which you see in this mid-dilated pupil over here. So these are the main findings which you are seeing in this patient. Let's go through them uh, as, as the video plays and see if you can recognize all of them easily or not. So if we move it forward, here you can see continuously keep looking for the anti. I'm doing retro illumination. You've got mild degree of red reflex, but not a very brilliant red reflex. Try to see the fundus, but the 90D does not give me a clear view of the fundus because of the hazy anterior chamber and the vitreous as well. So the next thing I'm trying to look at is if there's any corneal edema I can identify. I think the haziness is more because of the anterior chamber compared to the cornea because as the slit moves around, the surface of the cornea does not seem to be very edematous over here in this area. So you can here you can see if you want to look at this, if you can make this beam broader over here, this is the broad beam. So what you're seeing here is the the, the slit actually becomes broad, so you, this is the area of the epithelium which is being shown over here. The endothelial slit is not very clear when you make a broad beam, but you can see the posterior beam on the surface of the iris as a broad beam as well. And this is the area where you look for cells. Obviously, this patient is going to have flare, which you can see as a line over here, and then you will have cells floating in this area. And obviously, when you have a hypopian, you're going to have plus four cells, you're going to have dense fibrin over in this area as well. So those are the things which you're going to be looking for in this patient and which you need to demonstrate in, uh, or to tell an examiner, this is, this is what I've seen. The dilated, don't forget to tell the dilated pupil and how, if there's any posterior sinecki present or, or not in that area. Obviously, if it's a fresh case, there's not going to be much of a posterior sinecki, but they'll be present. Go on to higher magnification. And I'm, I have made the slit to about two or three millimeter in size. And now I'm actually, this is the best area to see the cells in the anterior chamber over here. And then you have see also the see the flare. Actually, once this posterior slit falls on the iris, that is the best uh, time to get that back scatter to see the cells on the uh, in the anterior chamber. So that is one technique. So you broaden that. If here you can see a bit of cells, uh, the slit lamp, uh, digital slit lamp is not, now is the best. So this is the best a time. This back scatter from the iris. If you shine that light on the cornea and then you get that backscatter from the iris surface, the, now you can see the flare. You can see that that sort of area which is illuminating that seems to be some particles in that area and then cells are also visible in a higher magnification. So must remember this is the area and this is the technique how to best see cells in the anterior chamber. So if you have that hypopian, obviously you're going to see those uh, uh, cells over there. There's, with this kind of uveitis, you're bound to get phimosis on a later stage as well. So I'm going down 
you can go down and measure the area of the uh, hypopion as well. So this is the most important findings which you get in patients with uh, anterior intense post-inflammatory response and the diagnosis in this patient is obviously anterior dense anterior uveitis which we'll call as endophthalmitis in this patient because there's hazy view of the vitreous. In order to confirm a diagnosis of endophthalmitis, we'll do a B scan and once the diagnosis is confirmed, the treatment of choice for these patients is intravitreal antibiotics. Gram positive and gram negative cover is needed. And on top of that, you will use topical antibiotics to cover that area, milder steroids, and then cycloplegic agents to relieve pain for the patient. Thank you very much.